Hey guys, it's Natalie Zimino. Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you do not know who I am, I'm a Roman Catholic YouTuber and I do YouTube videos on all things Catholicism. So if you're Protestant, Catholic, or whoever you are, you are welcomed here. So today, as you can tell, I have a very special guest here. This is Augustine in the flesh, my boyfriend. I'm here. Um, here to talk. Glad to be here. About, yep, here to talk um, about all, all things, things Catholicism. All things Catholicism. Um, we're we're going to do a Q&A. I asked some questions over on my Instagram, and that's a little shameless plug to go follow me over on my Instagram. And don't forget to follow my Soli Deo Gloria podcast over on Spotify. And you can I've also- I've heard that, that second episode. So good. <laughs> yeah. And you can go um, listen to it actually over here on YouTube. And yeah, so I'm going to be answering some questions from Instagram and my community posts on YouTube. So yeah, stay tuned for the end because guys, we have a very special announcement at the end of this video. So you do not want to miss. So do not skip ahead um, because you don't know when it's coming and do not, um, don't leave the video because I promise you will want to hear at the end of this video what big news we have. So yeah, you know, we'll get, today. yeah, we'll get right into the Q and A. This is actually our second time filming this because technical we had technical problems with storage, with the microphone, with mm. a bunch of things. So we went from two microphones to one and here we are. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this Q and A. Okay. Y'all. So our first question is how did you meet? So you want to answer that? We kind of have answered it basically in yep. long in our that second podcast of the silly day glory podcast so go check that out if you haven't but the short story of it is basically we met each other in high school and we hadn't known each other before it was a new school we became friends the whole year um grew closer and closer and by the summer of the first, at the end of that year we started dating so yeah, basically that's pretty much it. Um, and then the second question is, what age do you both recommend dating? As Catholics, your channel is amazing. Keep up the good work. As a 14-year-old, you're so inspiring. So what age do you both recommend dating? So personally, well, there are no like canon law on like what age you have to date, right? There's nothing that they really teach about like dating like specifics. The only specifics is that you should be dating for marriage, um, dating with the intent yeah. of um, loving your spouse forever. So um, there's not really any like thing objective I can kind of answer here that the church is like officially said. It's kind of us up to us laymen <laughs> to like decide. But the only like objective answer I can give is that you shouldn't be dating in middle school <laughs> because you Can't barely you barely know what you're gonna eat for lunch, right? <laughs> so yeah. how can you decide your future spouse? Um, but really it's subjective based off of maturity and things like that, because there's immature 30 year olds that are going to be dating out there. Yeah, right. For sure. And then, but obviously there's immature 16 year olds. So it's just kind of like, where do you find that balance? But the minimum I would say is like high school yeah. is when you can start, to, well. yeah, start discerning, but you have to make sure that you guys have the right intentions and, um, yeah, that's in Agreed. good chastity and yeah. morals. Okay, the next question is, any advice on how to find a spiritual director when I've never really heard anyone at my parishes talk about it or when you live in a, in two different towns because of university? Want to take that one? Yeah, I'll answer that one. So, yeah, getting a spiritual director director is hard these days because, I mean, in the old days, it would usually be your confessor, your priest. And um, now there's usually a priest shortage throughout the whole world. So it's kind of hard to come by it. But um, I think the first step to finding a spiritual director is definitely to talk to your pastor or any of your priests, see if that is available at your parish. Um, if, the, if first, if the priests do that, and second, if there's open spots. A lot of the times parishes will have lay people who have the education to be spiritual directors. Um, they'll have them available as well to do spiritual direction, so you can do that. Also, I would recommend finding online um, something like that. And yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for living in different towns and stuff, uh, luckily for this, we have the internet where, um, there is Google meet, there's FaceTime call anything. So stick with one spiritual director and obviously it's always better in person, but if it's not possible for a session, you can do it online. Yeah. And I would just say it's much, um, much harder because it's like pre shortage, pre shortage and stuff to like, find a director but i would say the only like 
way or like the possible way I think that like anyone could get one is just become friends with your priest like get to know them like they are there to get to know you right and like they do want to get to know you they just have so much to do that it's hard for them to like go out and find you but like if you come to them like they for sure will hopefully be open to like talking to you because like we're like super close with our priests and like I do have the option of having a spiritual director like if i needed like I totally could like get one (laughs) you know what I mean like my brother like just started kind of like talking to a priest so like the only way possible though is like getting to know um your priest and Mm -hmm. having an intimate relationship with them just like anyone so yeah I would just say start building bond and um like yeah just intentionally going out to talk with them so yeah are both of you cradle catholics what are your stories have you always been close to the faith like have you fallen away Mm -hmm. so um you can start do you, I'll, i guess I'll, yeah i'll start with mine so are you both cradle catholic so i'll wait for him to answer himself okay. but yes i'm a cradle catholic um my parents were catholic their whole life so yeah i was raised in the catholic church what are your stories so i was pretty much like yeah like in my faith like i never had like serious doubts like i'm gonna become atheist or start this new age stuff like i was always like fine like i never really had doubts but I think that was kind of my story like kind of my problem it's like I never doubted like I always just accepted everything and I didn't understand like why and I never questioned it and it was just like yeah this is life like go to mass on Sundays but like if you really think about that in the perspective of the world it's like you're going to eat bread like what is this like you know what I mean so that's really my story is that like I'd say eighth grade year is when I was like wait a minute I haven't questioned at all like what I've revolved my whole life around. So that's kind of how I got closer to my faith is actually asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I never fell away, but I guess I just was kind of like in this stagnant place and then I just grew closer, but I never like fell to grow closer. I guess, yeah, that's my story. Yeah, so I'm also a cradle cradle Catholic. Um, uh, I grew up, I, I, w- I was born in Colombia, which is very, very, like, all of Latin America is very culturally Catholic. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was always like that. We would never miss Mass on Sunday as a family. Um, I would, yeah, I mean, middle school years, it was rough. It was rough, man. It was, yeah, very angsty. Not really angsty, <laughs> just very rebellious with everything, really. Um, so I would have questions like, if God is so good, why do bad things happen? Which I nowadays I know the answer so much more clearly than I mm-hmm. knew back then. So good with that now, but would question it a lot of things like that. And I wouldn't really care. I mean, I believe that God was real and the church was real. I just thought it what he wasn't good really, which is, doesn't even make sense if I believe what the church teaches. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. And then this is kind of a confession. I think I told you one time in eighth grade, I started actually kind of looking into Islam because I always thought it was like, um, like, I don't know, the chant, like the, the Quran. Mm-hmm. And like, I actually started like listening to it because I thought it was like, like, I can't believe that they've been doing this for so long and they haven't stopped. Mm-hmm. And so I just, I was like, you know, I looked, looked, in, looking into it, learned about it. Um, and then I don't know what happened. I guess I just kind of stopped with that. I would not, nowadays I would never even listen to that, thing. but like, uh, <laughs> so I don't know. I just never found it interesting. Never found it worth my time, the faith. But I, I never believed that it was wrong, per se. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of stopped really praying. I wouldn't really care about Mass. And then I kind of had a... I wouldn't say, like, fell away completely because I still went to Mass and my family and everything. But I kind of had really a conversion mm-hmm. more freshman year of, of high school where I, um, uh, I started finding out the the rich tradition of the Catholic church. I went to Latin mass and um, I started finding out things like that, that just really attracted me to it at first. And then also all of those things made sense with the teachings of the church. And once I started finding that out, I started becoming more into my faith. Mm -hmm. I stopped all bad things that I was doing. And then I started developing my own prayer life. Mm -hmm. And then I found Mary and now I would rather die than give up. So yeah, that's my story. Okay, our next question is, what's your favorite spiritual reading book? So do you want to answer first? Yeah, my favorite, my, my confirmation saint is Saint Louis-Marie de Montfort. Um, so one of his most famous books is Devotion to Mary. That's my favorite. Um, there's a lot I want to read. I don't have time, though. 
unfortunately I, I want to find more time but I, I was of the ones that I've read that is number one my favorite spiritual reading mm-hmm. to devotion yeah um and then me so I'm kind of like a wild child <laughs> so I have I have like so many books on my bookshelf just like like him like I want to read so many I actually love reading like reading is like one of my favorite hobbies. <laughs> but I, my favorite books, probably, I love C.S. Lewis so much. It was actually funny because I went to um, the ordinary, like an Anglican, <laughs> right? The mass. And well, he was Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. Catholic. Catholic. Yes. Yes. And he, so he was a former Anglican, right? And so, so was C.S. Lewis. So he was kind of like making fun of C.S. Lewis in his family. And I was like, wow, okay. But anyway, um, so C.S. Lewis, I love his books. Mere Christianity, loved that. Um, I love the like, I like the theology of it. Like I understand where it has its mm. flaws, but like what it was good, it was really good for. Yes. Um, and so I love that. And I read like St. Benedict's rule. Like I love that. I love reading like the monastic rules. And then, um, yeah, I read like someone true devotion. Also like the guide to the interior life or soul or heart or something like that. Like I love these books. I just never like read them fully through. I kind of like go into books like reading, you know, what I want. Kind of like how you read. I mean, some people read the Bible like fully through, but I just kind of mm. like like okay, I want to read the Gospel of Matthew this month. You know what I mean? Something yes. like that. So that's kind of just how I am with spiritual reading, except for like C.S. Lewis's books because they're more like books. You know what I mean? Like you're mm. gonna flow. But yeah. And then the next question is, do you pray together? If so, what does that look like? So. We, um, yes, we every do. time we're together, actually, we try every day. Yeah, we try to. Forget, Sometimes but. we forget, but to do a chastity prayer, um, we just call upon Mary and yes. we just pray a little prayer. And then um, we pray the rosary, pray the rosary together sometimes. Um, not yes. not all the time, not like every day, but we do. And then also we attend mass, mass regularly together. Confession. Not usually, well. yeah, not every week mass, but it's usually like every other week. Um, and then, yeah, confession we do often too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we do pray quite often together. Okay, so our next question is, how to find a date as a Zoomer? I'm 22 years old and never went to a Catholic school. I attend weekly Mass, but there's only old people. Nothing wrong with our lovely old folks. <laughs> so, you want to take yeah, this Yeah, sure this one. So, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I think that, number one, the first thing you need to do in, in this scenario is Go to different mass times. If your parish has on Sundays, if it has mm-hmm. multiple multiple mass times, a lot of the times, the a certain mass time is the one where more people, more young yeah. people go to. Second thing you need to do is get involved with uh, young adult ministries, service projects, mm-hmm. and things like that throughout your parish. Yeah, and I just want to say really quick off of that. Um, I just want to say too, and if you have no young adult like things like that, like go to the priest, try to start one because then it'll attract young people to come mm-hmm. right if there's nothing okay there might be other people being like oh there's nothing so i can't go but if you advertise for something like i'm sure people would come but continue yeah. what you're gonna say. I, I always i also think that if if you have no luck with this and you tried everything one thing you can try is try finding a more traditional parish near you like a i don't know that offers the latin mass or the ordinary or maybe an eastern rite something like that near you because from my experience in those parishes, there's going to be a lot of young people there. So if you need to try that, you can try that as well. How do you stay chaste in this culture? Yeah, that's a loaded question. I think there's two parts to this. Yeah, question. there's two parts. Either you're in a relationship and you want to stay chaste within your relationship, right? Or you just mean stay chaste in general, like mm-hmm. be a pure single person. Yes. So. I think the first step to stay chaste is number one realize why it's good yourself you have to know why you're why you need to be chased not like the church says so but like Mm -hmm. why it's good why it's beautiful why it's true love Mm -hmm. um so first you have to uh, realize that yourself and we'll talk about how to do that secondly is make sure you if is with the relationship make sure your partner also realizes the importance of it Mm -hmm. and how to either let them know about it or you yourself find out the importance of chastity is to i think the best way is to read or listen to the classic speakers that talk about this, like Jason Everett, Matt Frad. Um, there's there's other ones, yeah. that, 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 but what, listen to them and they'll give you ideas why it's important and also how to practically go about it. Mm-hmm. This is important is to do what they tell you. They will give you tips. 
they will tell you like don't be alone together and then you have to follow that yeah that's the way you do it uh-huh yeah don't beat around the bush because a lot of times you're like oh they say this okay like they say that but like we can kind of make our own uh-huh. rules and like you Oops can idea. you can make some like own rules of like if you want to go even more extreme but like they're just setting up like the parameters of like okay this is like you know like this is like the most you can do you know what i mean so like you can like make even more strict if you're like no we want to save our kids just because of this you know like things like that but like w- like the guidelines they give like they're obviously like educated smart been in a relationship married people and so we might as well like take their advice like they're sure. the ones with the experience we're not so yeah. yeah and most of those guys actually like the ones i mentioned mm-hmm. they had huge conversions mm-hmm. with, with like, that topic so yeah. they know what it's like to be on the other side and they realize the, yeah. the beauty and love yeah. that you feel from and they the yeah they understand they know how hard it is but like they know how hard it is but they also know like how you can overcome it and so like when they give this like these talks like they know like what you guys or girls or whatever like are feeling and thinking but like they also know like it is possible like they change it is possible yes you chase and one last thing i was going to say is that um practically even without a partner is you have to be disciplined and build discipline and ask in prayer for that Mm -hmm. and most of all to just do what it takes Mm -hmm. to do it if you have to throw away your phone into a trash can or break up with your partner then that's what needs to be done Mm -hmm. Okay, our next question is, do you go to FSSP? So, um, so the FSSP is the Priestly Fraternity of St. Peter in English, and it's um, one of the um, largest, one of the biggest, yeah, uh, orders in the Catholic Church that does the, tra- the traditional liturgy and everything about it. And yes, so the Latin Mass near where we live is run by the FSSP, and that's where we go whenever we go to the Latin Mass. Yeah, so I, yeah, because I've been to, like, Latin masses before, not <laughs> there. Diocesan. Um, diocesan, yeah. Um, and then he, his first time was at FSSP. Yes. Like, that's, that's all uh, that's I all do. Um, but, yeah, and then so he introduced, like, that to me. And so, yeah, whenever we do go, we do have one. It's, like, 30, 40 minutes from yeah. here-ish. But, yeah, so that's the closest one, probably. Yes. Right. So, yeah, and then... The next question is, who are your favorite saints? So my favorite saint is St. Claire Vazizi. I talk about her all the time. Love her because of her devotion to the Eucharist. Just her, um, her what's the word? Um, faith and her trust, I guess, in um, like St. Francis. And now she like, gave up everything for, like, just because this guy was, like, showing up all of his stuff. And she's like, I'm going to follow that. Like, she just had a full, complete um, a love and stuff for God. I love her devotion. And then Beautiful. here's my favorite saint is my um, confirmation saint, Saint Louis Marie de Montfort. I love his his love for Mary. It's beautiful. Um, and I was going to say a couple more because I have so many favorite saints. I also love um, Blessed Pierre George of Fusati. He's great. Blessed Carl of Austria. If you don't know him, you got to know him. He's <laughs> awesome. Um, and then Venerable Louis of Granada and Venerable Mary of Agreda. Um, amazing ones as well. They wrote a lot of. Venerable Mary for great lot a lot about Mary, um, and those are and obviously Saint Augustine, my namesake, amazing saint. Okay, I did not know we were going to be naming a bunch of other saints. So <laughs> my other two favorite so saints, <laughs> my other two favorite saints, Saint Kateri. I love her and her story too. First off, I am like um, Native American, so <laughs> he like rolled his eyes or whatever. So I love Saint Kateri, um, but then also just her story of how. She didn't convert until she was, like, 20, I think, and then she died at age, like, 25. So she became a saint in, like, five years, like, right through her life. Like, I think that's just beautiful. And then also I love St. Thomas Aquinas. We've got to love them all. Like, yeah. yeah. So, love (laughs) Okay, our next question. What is your favorite monastic order? Yeah, so, like, strictly monastic, basically strictly monastic. I love the Norbertines. Mm-hmm. They're super cool. Actually, we we know a seminarian for the yeah. diocese. His brother is, is a frost. Yeah, and, he got to meet him too. Yeah, I got like, to meet him. Yeah. Cool. so cool. Um, I love the Benedictines. They're awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, those are probably my two favorite Benedictines. Yeah. Um, the next question is, what's your favorite thing about each other? So I guess I'll answer this first. I mean, obviously, there's like a lot of things I love about him. Um. But, like, virtue-wise, I guess I'll just say, um, is that I love his, like, 
I guess, determination to become a saint. Like, I think you don't really find that in a lot of, well, young men, but like a lot of just people in general, like in our culture, even if you're Catholic, like you don't find that like determination. And I just really see, at least like in the, what I've like seen is that like, I really see his like determination to become a saint and like his determination for me to become a saint, <laughs> just like for people to become a saint. And I just think that's beautiful. And it's just um, love and just care for um yeah, for just people and for his soul. And yeah, I just really think his yeah, determination. Oh, praise be to God. There's another question too that asks the same thing. What virtues, qualities stand out about each other? Mm-hmm. And for her, I'll say one thing. I mean, so many, I could talk about it. But the, I think one of the things that I would like to talk about is really Natalie's determination, especially seeing it with her YouTube channel. And yeah, she just wants to wants to do something she gets it done and I love also her zeal for knowledge she really wants to know the truth and I think it's just great I love Thank you do y'all like sports no <laughs> okay I am a little different than her I um follow FC Bayern Munich a huge soccer club if mm-hmm. you don't know it then I don't know where you've been they're a German team? Yes, it's a German team. We've won, won the Bundesliga, which is the German league, for 11 years in a row. But I've been a fan of them since 2016, so no one can blame me for bandwagon <laughs> because they got really big a couple of years ago. They were king, but mm-hmm. they're going down a little bit now. But but yeah, I love them. I, but I don't follow international soccer anymore. I, haven't, I didn't even watch the last World Cup. Yeah. International soccer. Like FC Bayern. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's basically the only... Like, I am just not a sports person. My family is just not sports people. Like, my brother wanted to start playing football in, like, middle school. He did. My parents let him. But, like, he quit. And then he fell in love with music because my family's just musical. It's more, like, intellectual. You know, that type of family. We're not, like, a sports type mm-hmm. of family. Yeah, I don't even um, watch my German so, so yeah. anymore. I don't have anywhere to watch Yeah, it. so we're not really yeah. sports people. I, oh, yeah. yeah. My dad, he grew up with, like, baseball, though, too, like, watching it and stuff. But we didn't really carry on that legacy in our family. We don't really watch that, but. My theory, guys, is that sports is just an opium for the people. Just is, hear me out. Is hear it me planned? Out. Is it real? The next question is favorite hobbies together. So yes, uh, we fun. like antiquing a lot. We go to antique stores sometimes. Um, most of the time that when we get together, it's usually like just really quick time to talk. Or we like watching movies just because – not just like to watch a movie, but it's like I have to watch these certain movies that he makes me watch so that we can like discuss oh, their yes. like <laughs> interplay with the Catholic yeah. Church and things like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway, so that and then we just like we have like, actually so many hobbies that we wanted, like so many things we wanted. Yeah, to they're just all too like, like we want to go to Mongolia and like, we, and, like yeah. ride the horses there. Yeah, but. so we can't do that. So like this is the best we got for now. But most of the time, like when he comes oh, over, we we went to the opera. I mean, like, oh yeah, we do go to um, the opera. Um, but yeah, most of the time when we're together, like he comes over to my house it's just because priests are there, and we're just gonna hang out with the priest, <laughs> or like we're or just we're gonna do this talking right about now. doing like video stuff, podcast things, basically Anything intellectual, intellectual conversations. That's basically we're nerds. Yeah, we're kind of weird, but anyway. So the next question is favorite church song. So you want to answer first, or do you want to answer first? I guess I'll answer. So. Um, my favorite like songs that I like to listen to, I guess. Um, I really my favorite like song of all time, just because of the lyrics. Well, I mean, it's good, whatever, like musically, but the lyrics, uh, Hill songs, a hundred billion times. Literally, I just can't like just read. Go read the lyrics if you haven't already. Just if you take the lyrics, to me, it's just like a poem. I love that. And then also that writer of that song, Benjamin William Hastings. He wrote a song too. It's called Eden. I love the lyrics and the bridge too. So I like those songs. Like those aren't mass songs, <laughs> but like I like those songs. And then um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I also like what's the song? No, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, those are the, I guess I'll just say those two songs. I just love that songwriter. So yeah, I like that. For me, um, I really like traditional hymns of the church, and I have a lot of favorites. But one that's Kind of unknown is called Jesu Redemptor Omnium, which is from Christmas Matins in the old calendar. So beautiful. There's a lot of recordings of it, I think. So if you listen to that one, I love the traditional um, adoration ones, all of the Marian ones, like the Song Regina, Regina Chale, all of them. And I also 
of the more modern ones, there's one called, uh, it's a, a version of O Magnum Mysterium, which is by some guy named Laurie Distin or something. And it, he wrote in like the 60s. It's beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful. Um, and another one called Angelus Domini. I'd rather be the composer. That one's beautiful. Is he also Catholic? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, no, he's not doing the intro or the outro. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Um, like I promised, though, there was going to be a special announcement at the end of this video. So um, I guess we can do like a drum roll. No, it's fine. <laughs> no? Okay, we're just going to go into it. Okay. Um, so I guess we'll make... I have obviously made the announcement because it's actually not about me. So basically, guys, I'm starting my YouTube channel too. So I'm copying her. But I'm making my own one. Yeah. And the name of the channel, you'll link it in the description once this comes out. And hopefully, yes, my my video will be uploaded by then. My first video. By this video. And go check it out. It my channel will be called Totally Marion. So not all of the videos will be only about talking about Mary, but the reason it's Totally Marion is because if you're familiar with Saint Louis Marie's consecration and everything, everything that I want to do is by her and through her with her in her and for her, okay? So all of the things that I want to say in that, in that channel are hopefully what she wants me to say. So it's totally Marion, it's not mine, mm-hmm. it's hers. So if you guys enjoyed listening to Augustine and I discuss and really enjoyed Augustine in particular, <laughs> then go check out that video down there in the description. I'll link his channel. And yeah, please go over there and support him because he is such such a beautiful soul and i really think that you guys should um go subscribe to him and yeah so we can just keep building this wonderful community and yeah so that's all i have for you guys today thank you so much for listening um please like and subscribe down below if you haven't already and go subscribe over to totally marion and yeah i love you guys so much and so does god have a blessed day saint louis de montfort pray for us have a blessed day y'all